Our first credit union hotline is Cam Miller, a pro football focus. In case you missed it this week, we've been talking a lot about some of the articles and lists being put out by Cam and others. And Cam, it's great to have you on BYU Sports Nation. I appreciate you having me on. Appreciate uh, getting the getting the love out there. But you know, I one of those things I like to say is I, I like to make sure that everybody who deserves recognition gets out there. So the guys on the list from BYU, from even out west, that the East Coast doesn't normally love. I, I you know I love being able to get the the light out there for you guys. And we appreciate it. And we appreciate football in January. We want to talk football every day. So this is fantastic. <laughs> Tell us what went into your top 101 list, because what I really appreciate and, and what we like as a staff is, okay, there are people giving individual grades. It's, we're not just seeing the box scores. We're not just seeing these kind of regular, normal surface level statistics. We're seeing uh, higher advanced metrics in this. So what went into that? Yeah, you know, I first did – you know, looked at how many players played X amount of snaps to kind of qualify to make sure, you know, somebody wasn't getting a high grade and not really playing a whole bunch. So that was first step. And then after that, you know, you look at the, the our full season grade. Um, and then I took it a step further. Instead of that, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that somebody wasn't getting the benefit of the doubt of playing a really lackluster schedule. So I looked and I saw where those high grades were coming from, from all these players kind of spread it across the positions. You know, if there was a great quarterback that was getting great grades, but against Wofford, you know, he went down a few spots and, and then vice versa. If there was great grades against better teams on defense, on offense, that's kind of where it did. So, you know, I, I moved some things around and, and went heavily with our grades, but the ability to, you know, grade positively against top-notch teams and avoid negatively graded plays against those top teams as well is kind of how I got to that final list. The two BYU Cougars that made your list for 2019, safety Austin Lee coming in at number 86, and then you had Brady Christensen, the offensive lineman, coming in at number 95. What are your specific thoughts on those two players and the seasons that they had in 2019? Yeah, I just love the way that Lee was able to play on the back end. I think, you know, when you hear a safety's name a lot, it's probably not for the best reasons. There, There's not a lot that can go right at the safety position, so when you're you know, only targeted X amount of times or a few amount of times as the safety is, for him to make the amount of plays that he made on the ball, kind of free roaming and made, making plays on, ball, on the balls that you know, weren't even in his coverage. That's just, it spoke to how well he roamed the field. You know, didn't miss a lot of tackles as well. And I just think that, that overall play, you didn't hear his name a lot, but that was a good thing. You didn't want to hear his name a lot. And then Brady, on the other side, I mean, this guy just does it all. I found out in talking about him uh, and getting him on this list as well that he played outfield in high school. So the dude's just athletic. You cue the tape and you just watch for a big man how how fluid he moves through everything. So I'm a huge fan of Brady. I think he definitely uh, is deserving of that spot, not giving up pressure, paving the way in the run game. I think, you know, he's pivotal uh, to that tackle spot. You said he played outfield in high school in baseball? Yeah, yeah. I was told that from a, from a high wow. school teammate. He found me on Twitter and Tell me that he played outfield in high school. So, yeah, cue the tape and just what check out how, how athletic that dude is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he feels like a tight end who has become a tackle, and sometimes those are the best tackles because they can move a little bit, right? Yeah, I definitely – I mean, athleticism, especially at the college level, um, and even more so at the NFL, but especially there when you have some of these freaky, you know, twitchy, high-twitchy athletes on the edge that, you know, can move much faster than, than their height and, and weight at the age of 18, 19 years old. you got to be athletic out there. Is this the thing um, that you're tracking in terms of these grades during the season and evaluating as well, or is this a postseason uh, post uh, analysis? Because when we saw Austin Lee on this this list, we thought Austin was a good player, but we didn't think he was top 100 in college football. Yeah, so it's uh, we we grade every game, uh, every player on every play of every game. In fact, um, and we do it live as as live as we can. Some of those weeks are pretty tough. Uh, week one, you know, when every FBS team was playing an FCS team, those are a little bit more taxing when there's 95 games. But, yeah, we're pretty uh, pretty live on Saturdays and then into Sundays as well. We have a team of uh, over 500 part-time analysts and then a team of, you know, 75 senior and full-time analysts that are on staff year-round. So they get graded on a game basis after, as the game's happening, uh, and then it, that, those cu- accumulate to a uh, season-long grade. And – Cam, it, it, BYU was close to having two offensive linemen on the list. I, I know you're high on James Empey, but he's one of those guys that just kind of barely missed the cut. Is that right? Yeah, so he just missed the cut. What we had, you know, he was one of the higher graded setters in all of college football last season. So if I would have done this before the year, I would have said he would have made the list at the tail end. I think what happened is he was a, uh, he struggled against that opening slate of the games. I mean, uh, it's it's the hardest opening stretch of the, of the schedule from last year, those first four uh, and then after that, I mean, he didn't have a, a very good start. But after that, I mean, well above average, a couple of elite games uh, down the back end of the, of the season. So he, he was 
kind of climbing back into that. And it was one of those moments where he was almost on there. Only one center made the list this year because it was just, you know, that's center play was good, not great this year across the nation. You had James MP as the 10th best offensive lineman returning in 2020. And then uh, Brady Christensen as the 20th best offensive lineman. So two in the top 20 for BYU. Um, these, and that's what I love about what you guys do is this gives us different analysis and especially of linemen, right? So what went into the decision and the grading, I guess, on those two to say, hey, two of the top 20 are from BYU? Yeah, just, it, you know, it speaks to how high they graded among, among their peers. You know, those it, James is a, is a top returning center. Didn't quite make the 101 because of, you know, tight, their tackles are a little bit more valuable to an offense you got to be able to stop that pressure on the outside and be able to run block from the tackle. So that's kind of where Brady made the list, much higher graded. But James, you know, definitely he, he was worth more wins and worth, uh, you know, more than the average center, more than any, anybody else I think than Matt Hennessy uh, at Temple this season. So for him to be on that list of top, in, in the top ten of returning guys, uh, it speaks to how, how highly, you know, he should grade and how highly uh, valuable he is to the BYU offense next year. Tied in Matt Bushman and defensive lineman Kyrus Tonga are both players who are expected to play in the NFL. A lot of us thought that would happen this year. Both decided to come back for their senior seasons. What are your thoughts on both of those players in terms of rankings or just, just by, by watching them uh, with your own eyes? I really, really like Bushman. I like to save hands. I think maybe this year was a little bit of a step back in that, uh, in that regard as well. I think just uh, across the field. Uh, was a little bit of a step back for him. I like his versatility. He's always had great grades and pass protection from us as well. So I think that's one of the things that that kind of you know gives him that next level advantage. If if he's in this sort of we've seen the 49ers kind of use their George Kittle uh, as a pass protector, uh, it, not quite as much because he's way too athletic. But if if you know you're going to see these recipes for the NFL, you got to be able to do all three at the tight end position. And I think Bushman has that. And then Tonga on the other side of the ball, if he can just sort of improve a pass rush, I think if he becomes that sort of you know, beefy guy at the middle that also has some pass rush moves because he's been elite against the run, elite in his tackling. Only, we only have him uh, charted with two missed tackles last year, which is very impressive wow. considering, you know, the size of a guy in the middle and the, and the short running backs that he normally have to be tasked with tackling. So just uh, improvement in the passing, pass rushing game, I think, for Tonga. Uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, pretty high day two, even maybe sneaking into the day one if he gets those sack totals that everybody likes to see. Yeah, we know his, uh, the high end is really high, so we're excited to see what he can do in his senior season. We're talking with Cam Meller from Pro Football Focus. Is there any BYU player that you think could perhaps uh, come into any of these lists in the upcoming season? Well, I definitely think if we're going to say, uh, you know, somebody's going to stay on there, it'd, it'd be Brady Christensen. But, I mean, I've, I've been a uh, – if you've ever seen me on Twitter, I think outside of Provo, maybe even outside of Utah, maybe not even, but maybe, maybe outside of Provo, uh, probably the highest – on Zach Wilson across the country. I love the way he plays football. I was very, you know, obviously everybody was a little disappointed in the way the season unfolded, but for him to, to finish strong like he did in our, our grades, I really would expect Zach to kind of bounce back and have a full healthy season uh, and then get on this top 101 list next year. What stuck out to you about his performance? Because uh, we've kind of broken down what he did in the games that we perceived mattered the most. Um, and, and hoping that he can be a little more successful that way. Obviously, the thumb injury affects his wrist and how the ball comes out when he comes back and plays against good teams like San Diego State and, and Hawaii. But what stuck out to you? I think what it was, I think, is you had to, you had to move past the uh, the box score for him this year. You actually had to go back and watch some of these throws because some of I, I charted them and there were six interceptions that he threw that were not his fault. Mm -hmm. There were multiple moments that they went right through the receiver's hands into the defensive back's hands. There was one against Washington where the receiver just running an out route falls down and the, and the ball would have been perfectly placed, but instead goes to the defensive back. So looking past that and realizing that not all of those mistakes that the general box score fam, we call them, likes to see in, in, the, in the box score and see how many interceptions he threw, uh, you look past that and realistically it only should have been three maybe that were absolutely his fault, which is a great number. Uh, for his season. So I think that, I think there's down for down accuracy. If you go back to the bowl game against Western Michigan, that I've, obviously everybody knows the down for down accuracy that he has on uh, the arm strength to hit all levels of the field. I just really love the way that he plays the game. When you look at whether it's the players that we're talking about on the 2019 list, guys that possibly be on the 2020 list, in your opinion, who do you think is BYU's best chance? Maybe that, maybe it's a couple guys, BYU's best chance to be playing in the NFL next season or in the next two years. I'd say Brady Christensen. I think just the way that he moves, that athleticism, he's improved his grades even from year before uh, dramatically to this season, which year before was great. This year was even better. 
So if he keeps that rise, I think we've seen how important tackles are at the NFL level, especially athletic ones. And so if you're if you're if the Bucks are out there paying 60, 40, whatever million they paid Donovan Smith, then Brady Christians has got to get a look because you know that position of left tackle is so valuable at the NFL level. And so there's such a gap in terms of the top tier to maybe playable NFL starters. And then the next year, I think Brady is already in that, that level of playable NFL starters. So I think Brady, Brady Christensen probably has the best chance. And if not the best chance, the chance to be highest drafted as well. Absolutely. High praise for Brady Christensen, Zach Wilson, and others. Well, Cam, this was very insightful. I imagine at some point in the future, we'll reach out to you again. This was fantastic. We appreciate uh, a few minutes to break down the BYU Cougars. I'm always around. Thanks for having me. I do appreciate it. Okay, thanks, Cam. Cam Miller on the Desert First Credit Union Hotline. Desert First, you know why we show how from Pro Football Focus. That was 